Hey y'all, welcome to Horrible Gaming. My name is Nora and on today's video we are doing our weekly island tour. So today's island tour is this incredible stray inspired island. Y'all, if you loved the game as much as I did, you're gonna love this island as much as I did today. And even if you haven't played the video game Stray, this island has a ton of great inspo for someone maybe doing a nighttime city or maybe you're doing something abandoned or Japanese inspired. There's definitely something for everybody on this island tour today is gonna inspire you for sure. So today's island was created by Himiko Crossing on Instagram. I will have all of their socials linked in the video's description. If there's a code you're interested in, just like always, make sure you reach out to the creator because I have no idea what all the codes were used on this island today. So like usual, we will be starting our island tour right here at the entry. So without spoilers, what I love about this island is how well it does capture the vibe of Stray. So if you haven't played the game, the short story to this is you're a cat and you get stuck in like this cyberpunk abandoned city. There's a lot of like illumination and neon lights everywhere and it's raining in the game and it's just really dark out and very gloomy and this island just captures its vibe so perfectly well. So in general, Stray is like one of my top favorite games right now and I totally recommend it if you haven't played it yet. So when I saw that Himiko released this island on Instagram, I was like, okay, we have to tour this like now. This is so incredible and what I love a lot about this island is there is just so much great structure inspo. Regardless of doing a cyberpunk city or not, this is really great inspo for those who are doing maybe something more Japanese inspired. And just in general, there's like a lot of great transitional ideas for those who maybe struggle with, you know, ideas on how to transition behind like really big structural builds. So I hope that today's island is going to really help inspire somebody out there. Maybe you're going through burnout. This island will definitely help you get out of it. So like usual, we are at the entry and and already I have been showing y'all all these different angles of just like the entry of this island. It is absolutely insane. There are so many illuminated items that I honestly had no idea existed and items that I didn't realize I could be uh, customized. Something else I really appreciated about today's island tour is the fact that the island actually uses bookshelves and stalls. I feel like a lot of people don't use the bookshelf or stall item ever since we got 2.0, but it's still a really good item, especially when you're trying to capture these really heavily illuminated and structures on a city course. So don't be afraid to use this item on your island still. It is still a very great option. So I do know the road design that they're using. We actually used it on my abandoned city island and this is created by Arigo Alley on Instagram and they are one of my most favorite road design creators ever because as you can see, it looks incredibly realistic. So definitely a great choice if you're doing a abandoned theme or going for an island inspired by Stray. So like I said earlier, I just can't get over how illuminated and realistic this island feels. And the fact that the island just has a lot of detail to it, but there's honestly not very much lag going on. I always say on my channel, I love laggy islands because then you get really detailed, you know, themes. But when you have islands like this, do expect some minimal lag. It is completely normal since the switch is not very powerful. But this island is a great example that you can go crazy with your decorating and it's still very pleasant to uh, tour and go around. So I know that there's a ton to explore on this island. I think we're just going to wander and kind of see what we stumble upon. It looks like we're at the edge of the map. So this is a great transitional idea for pretty much any city core theme. If you're near the edge of your map and you don't really know what to do. I really love the usage of an incline here and also just, you know, getting some villagers placed. Every villager home is beautifully done and there's a lot of great details to it. It also looks like they're using the field sign right there as a caution side on the road. And that is one of my new favorite details to use. It just adds such a nice realism effect to city islands like we're seeing today. So like I said, we're just going to wander and kind of see what we stumble upon and it looks like we're at our first structure and I feel like this is such great inspo for a lot of different builds. I feel like that bar would be a great um, structural build for even a ramen shop. So like I said earlier in this video, there is a lot of great ideas for multiple city core themes on this island tour today. So once we leave that area, we are greeted by this amazing filler build and I am a huge sucker for abandoned basketball courts and this one is such a great idea because it's actually at the edge of terraform. So normally when I do builds like this, I kind of like put them in the center. They're not on terraform, but this is so unique to me and original because it's at the edge of terraform. So we have like this raised effect in a way, kind of overlooking this road in the distance. I just think that this is such a wonderful idea for a lot of different city core themes. So this once again is going to inspire my current island. I definitely love the idea of a raised uh, basketball court spot. And I really love just how this whole location is flowing. It kind of like transitions over to this 
neighborhood. So we have like this really beautiful road placement over here. I just love this little like minimal angle with that crosswatch signal. Everything again is just gorgeous on this island and the road layout is just beautiful. So once we leave that neighborhood location, we go down this incline and it looks like this is actually bringing us back towards the entry. So we technically have already seen this spot, but this is a different angle and look of that build. So I'll go ahead and get my camera out and kind of like rotate it so y'all can kind of see how the items were used here and just how incredible it looks. Just like in general, this item layering is insane and such wonderful inspo. Like I said earlier, I feel like this is great inspo for those doing a Japanese theme. So this would be a wonderful idea on getting some market builds in and how you can also transition from it. I just really love this incline transition from that build. I just think it's really well done. So I think I'm gonna make my way back towards this neighborhood that we were just at. This is actually right by that basketball court location and we're just gonna kind of wander. But something that really caught my eye is this unique road placement here. Do you notice kind of how like it's a diamond shape in front of the villager home and then it transitions to like an angle? I just really love this road placement here and how it is a transitional area. I just, I've never seen a road transition look like this before. And I love how original and beautiful it has been done. And I really love all the attention to detail, like the storage, all the trash everywhere. It's just really capturing this abandoned cyberpunk city so well. So it looks like the neighborhood is continuing over here towards the left side. And if you take a little look at the bottom of my screen, you can kind of see like this rustic um, overgrown brick wall. And that is one of my new favorite um, items to use in replacement of simple panels. This is the stonework kitchen. I want to say that's what it's called reversed. And it just acts like such a great wall transitional spot on terraform or even just place like you're seeing right now. This is a wonderful option if you're trying to reduce lag and don't want to have to use a bunch of simple panels. It just looks really realistic and there's a lot of great, you know, color options for it. So I'm pretty sure I've seen everything over here, but I did get lost a few times during this island tour and you'll see transitions when that happens. But I'm gonna double check over here real fast to make sure I haven't missed anything. So looks like we're good to go over here. So I'm gonna make my way back towards the left side where Nook's Cranny is. That's gonna be definitely our next location we need to check out. But there's also an incline that we need to go down as well. I think I'm gonna come back to Nook's Cranny later and just follow this angled road to where that incline is so I don't miss anything. I really love this transition and the layering done with the trees and evergreen ash on the first level. But I love especially how you can see like these uh, glowy illuminated rustic but abandoned buildings in the distance. It's just the layering on this island is just incredible. It is just so inspiring and I just love every detail and all the effort that the island owner has put into it. So we are now at the edge of the map and this is one of my favorite locations and again another spot I want to take inspo from but I'm gonna make my way over here back towards the left real fast just to make sure I don't miss anything. This next spot is gonna blow y'all's mind. It is so incredibly done especially if you played the game Stray. You'll know how well this location just captures the vibe of Stray so well but do y'all see this item layering? Once again if you have not played Stray this is a wonderful build for some sort of a Japanese market. Something cluttered with an alleyway effect to it. I just love everything about this. This is so inspiring, so well done and just all the attention to detail from the party light arches, the different textures of rooftops and then how they've you know finished off the alleyway in the back on the edge. It's just so beautiful and absolutely stunning. I don't know about y'all but there has been plenty of times where I've visited dream islands that are just so incredible and we see builds like we're looking at today and it just makes me want to completely flatten my island and restart because I wish I could do something like this. Sometimes I struggle with figuring out you know structures and transitional ideas so when we have islands like we're looking at today to kind of refer to and help inspire us it's just so amazing to have you know this type of inspo and just really see that there is plenty of options still um, to build in the game. So like I said earlier in my video I did get lost a couple of times and I missed several locations throughout my island tour so when you come and visit this dream address be on the lookout for these little hidden rooftop builds like we're looking at right now. I love this build so very much because it really does capture the vibe of Stray. So I just really appreciate this little attention to detail. I'm pretty sure there was a few others that I missed during my island tour. So just be on the lookout for these really cute little rooftop builds that are kind of like hidden behind builds. Alrighty, so now that we saw that location, we are back towards that incline right next to that marketplace. And we are back at the edge of the map towards this spot. Like I said, I want to take inspo from this. I love the fact that we are incorporating the edge of our map with this really cute little sitting area kind of just overlooking the water but then we have this great apartment build and this is actually why I was trying to hunt for the same window code actually on my Twitter the other day because I saw this build and I was like I need this. This is so beautiful. I have 
been wanting to use this custom design code for quite some time, but I just didn't really know how to go about it. And this island just delivered all the inspo that I needed to finally get this code used. I really love the combination of all the simple panels with the bookshelf. And then we have the concrete looking uh, wide display shelf for first. And then we have like these little gaps of just terraform with a custom design code on it for like, you know, little patio areas and just all the layering being done on this build just really captures this apartment complex so well. And then I really love just all these little details in front of it. So just some really wonderful inspo for a lot of different themes out there. Anyways, once we leave that location, we are greeted with another one of these beautiful illuminated rustic but abandoned structures. I just love this so much because it is a great idea on how you can incorporate a build that kind of also works as a transitional spot. Anyways, we are almost done with this island tour. I'm pretty sure the museum is one of the last locations we need to check out, but I also forgot to check out Nook's Cranny and we need to make our way back towards that location on the map. So we will be transitioning back to that location in a second, just because so many of you are always asking for inspo on how you can incorporate these buildings onto city core. But before we make our way over there, I really wanted to show this wonderful idea that honestly I didn't even think of, but I love this combination with that kitchen reversed and the fence in front of it. It kind of had like those little gaps that we get when we put it together. So that is some wonderful inspo. Then we have this really nice transitional spot over here. I believe that this is supposed to be an auto repair shop, but I could be wrong, but I really love the simplicity and modern look to this build. So this is wonderful inspo. And the great thing about it is it doesn't look like it's using any custom design codes. I'm pretty sure those panels are the base game, simple panel design. So wonderful inspo for those needing to do some sort of a structural build, but you don't have that much design code space to work with. I also feel like this structure would work wonderful for like a 7-Eleven build or small convenience shop. So I will definitely be taking inspo from it for myself on my modern island. And it looks like this is actually the transitional spot from these villager homes in the very beginning of our island tour. So it does look like the museum and Nook's Cranny are our last locations on this island tour today. So this museum build is so amazing and I absolutely love it because many of us wish we could have been able to customize our museum exteriors. So I think y'all are gonna really appreciate this once we go up to that location. I just wanted to get quickly a different angle of that shop just so y'all can kind of see the other side of it. So once we go up the incline, we are greeted with finally the museum. Y'all, I just love this. This definitely gives me like some restaurant sort of vibes to it. It just looks so wonderful. It's beautifully done and it hides that museum exterior so well. It also looks like we're near the edge of the map. So we have some really nice parking lot clutter over here. There's also a really small mini parking lot over here behind that um, auto repair shop. I want to say that's what that was, but I could be wrong. But I really love this because even if you didn't want to use cars, this would be a great little bike parking lot. So now before we go check out Nook's Cranny, we're going to make our way back towards the left side to the other spot right next to the museum. And I love how this was transitioned, especially since we're at the edge of the map. And I feel like this is such a great build because with roadways, we are often tempted to continue them because they're really hard to transition and start a new build. And this just shows even if you're on terraform, you don't have to terraform the whole roadway. You can kind of just like stop and end it with a really nice build like we're looking at. So I feel like this is a great idea for multiple city core themes. But another thing that really caught my attention was the usage of the ice block items. I never use these because I don't know how to use them on city core. And this just proved me wrong that you can use these on city islands and do a really nice, beautiful illuminated build with them. So just like I mentioned earlier, I totally forgot to go to Nook's Cranny. So I went ahead and transitioned us over here so y'all could see how it looks. But there was also another location that I forgot to check out. And it was another really nice cluttered market way build. So I feel like, again, if you're doing a Japanese island, this will really inspire you. But this was actually in the front of the island in the beginning of our tour. I just think I totally forgot to go through it. I could be wrong, but I wanted to go to this location before I ended today's island tour. And like usual, before I end today's video, I do wanna give a huge thank you to all of my channel members. Thank you for supporting me as a creator. Just your support in general means the world to me. So a huge thank you to Adriana Dawson, Madison Rachel, Cosmon, Dami, the Artsy Gamer, Opal of Wisteria, Irish Lady 51, Baby Blue X 016, Cherry Dot Crossing, Mickey Koo, Amanda, It's Your Girl Crystal, The Bellarific, Connor Adventure, Wisteria Crossing, Z Toxic, Kavi, Cherry Blossom, Catherine Funk, and Monica B. Seriously, y'all support means just the world to me. Thank you so much for watching and have a horrible day. I'll see you next video.